Jim was on his couch a month ago. First player in NFL history now to have at least 250 passing yards and multiple passing touchdowns in each of his first five games with a franchise. In his five games with Cleveland, he has thrown for more, he's thrown more touchdown passes than the Steelers, Titans, and Jets have this season. Yes, they're good. Right. It, it's, the it's Steelers suck. <laughs> It's unbelievable what they're doing because they were 31st in offense before he took over. Yeah. It's the improvement that he has led this team that is unbelievable. That's a whole different conversation. Yeah, but when you look at their three offensive tackles are out, Nick Chubb is out, and they're on the precipice of maybe having a shot at the one seed or making real noise in the playoffs. It's unbelievable what Joe Flacco's doing. It's 26% of their salary cap, right, is on IR? Yeah. Yeah. They're 11 and 5 and they're going to the playoffs. They can still get, if things break the right way, the one seed in the AFC. So whether they do that or not, they're in the playoffs. If you're looking at that playoff field, are they a team that uh, that you're eager to play? Oh, absolutely not. They're a Super Bowl contender, legitimate Super Bowl contender. I think the only team in the AFC that you feel confident or that you don't feel confident that they can beat is probably Baltimore. Baltimore can run it on them. But because of the way that Joe is playing, because of the way that this defense, this is one of the, if not the best, back sevens in all of football, the way that Jim Schwartz has designed it, and the way that this offense now, that Joe Flacco and Kevin Stefanski are on the same page, hey, here's, here's the real AFC situation. If you're in the AFC, you'd rather play Kansas City than Cleveland. You'd rather play Kansas City in the playoffs than Cleveland. Absolutely. Well, Cleveland's wow. two games better, or a game and a half better in the standings in Kansas City. So it's not The that. way that this team yeah. in totality is playing, you would rather play Kansas City right now than you would rather play Cleveland because in the 1 through 53, playing much more consistent football. And Daniel didn't want to say it, at least right now, because it's a different conversation. This is the best quarterback play Cleveland has had in the last two years. And that includes Deshaun Watson, who was brought over with a fully guaranteed contract. Now, let's think about why. When Kevin Stefanski was brought in, you would hear names like Kirk Cousins. It's why you thought it would work with a guy like Baker Mayfield, because he doesn't necessarily need the dual threat quarterback. He's the guy that wants to run the football, get into play action, be able to take shots, and also have a quarterback that can distribute the football accurately. That's what Joe Flacco has done. And then on the other side of that, Joe Flacco has gone above and beyond the X's and O's, doing some things that we didn't necessarily expect young Joe Flacco to do that he's able to do now. And we know that he has that mentality that he's going to continue to push the football down the field, but it's been the accuracy and the connection that they didn't have early on in the season. And so the other piece of this is this. Joe Flacco playing with house money. No doubt. Joe Flacco knows what it's like to not have this game. See, a lot of us, once we lose it, we go into something else, right? When football was over for me, when I walked away from it, I walked into TV. Uh And so every day I realized what I had, but I can't go do it again. I don't get that opportunity to walk into a locker room with that perspective, still with an ability to play this game. Joe Flacco does. He is playing this game with pure joy. He's also playing this game with no thought about what this does to his legacy, Mm -hmm. what people are going to think of him if he doesn't succeed, because he knows that this is an opportunity that has been gifted to him. And I love the way that he's approached it. I love the way this team has embraced him, and I agree with him wholeheartedly. To me, to me, the Cleveland Browns are the scariest team outside of the Baltimore Ravens. You know what struck me? Like, we talk about Watson being hurt. They're on their fourth quarterback. They lost both starting tackles. They lost Nick Chubb. They didn't have Amari Cooper last night. They're playing against a team that lost its quarterback on the fourth play of the season and just doesn't seem to have embraced the challenge the same way. It's been so disappointing on the other side of the ball. I mean, here's a team that could have had Joe Flacco, had a good defense. Did. And, and last night, it just didn't look nearly as competitive. But, Dan, going back to what R.C. Yeah. said, going back to the Browns for a second, they really remind me of the Tom Brady Buccaneers from this standpoint. Mm-hmm. They could play lights-out defense, play off Lenny, you got Jerome Ford, and you have a quarterback <laughs> who's really close to the end of his career that can get the ball down the field. And if the four of us are having a conversation in a month, guys, and we're talking about a surprise team in the playoffs, the Cleveland Browns have every indice of a team that could do that. Yeah, the only team, the only team that they had played that I would sit here and say, 
unquestionably believe that she'd win the game would be Baltimore. They, they can go beat anybody they, they in the AFC. And this they year. beat Baltimore this year. And so. I think to RC's point with the play in the house money, so you watch it with Joe's play. Like, you yeah. watch him be. Some of the throws he made to Njoku last night on the crossing routes, part of that is because he loves this offense. This is the offense that he was in with Gary Kubiak yeah. in Baltimore yep. when he's playing really good. Sure. Part of that is because – he knows this defense is unbelievable. And if he throws a pick or two, this defense, more often than not, is going to bail him out. You saw it with the Hickman yep. pick six last time. To put into context, we've talked about the IR and the percentage of people. One, probably going to win coach of the year, Kevin Stefanski. Probably. Joe Flacco has now played himself very much so in the conversation for comeback, comeback player play, of the right. year. They probably have Miles Garrett as defensive yeah. player of the year. And Jim Schwartz could be a sis assistant coach of the year. Add it all up and you have a legitimate AFC contender, which for the vast majority of their existence, the Browns have not been. Yeah. But this year could be different. And tomorrow, the Cowboys hosting the Lions in a game you can see on ABC and ESPN. This is what is at stake in that game. The Lions could tie a franchise record with their 12th win of the season. They're also still in the mix for the number one overall seed in the NFC if they can keep up with That's the crazy. 49ers, right? The Cowboys are looking to complete a perfect season at home and to keep the pressure on the Eagles for the NFC East title. So the Cowboys back at home, but they have lost two in a row, both on the road. So if you're watching this tomorrow night, which I assume everyone will on ABC and ESPN, Mike T, what are you looking to see from the Cowboys that will make you feel differently about them as they head toward the playoffs? Keep playing well on offense. This is not about home and road guys. Miami, give them all the credit in the world. They had a great last drive last week. If they didn't complete that drive, we'd be talking about Dak Prescott as an MVP candidate. Dallas is great with the lead. That's what they do best on defense, rush the passer, turn the ball over. They could do that at home. They could do that away. But if Detroit can run the ball, it's going to be a different game. But the best way to help this Dallas Cowboy defense is to have Dak Prescott and that offense continue to play at a high level. And if we take away some of the noise around their defense guys, Dak is as good as any quarterback right now in the league. Yeah, Dak's playing really good. you got to start telling the truth about the Cowboys, though. It is about home and road. Like, they're 0-6 the last six road games versus winning teams. So we can't pretend that that's not a real thing. They, they went on the road last year in the playoffs and won a game. It was against, against a team, team had with a losing, losing record. record. Yeah. It's the playoffs. Oh, last, it's stop the play it. It's stop, the start, playoffs. Start telling the I didn't, truth. I didn't, I didn't love the way the Dans jumped on you just now, though. I thought that was... Thank bordering you. on a little malicious. Thank you. <laughs> and that was bordering on pandering. What do you think about the Cowboys? <laughs> the, 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 so we, we keep talking about the, the Cowboys offense and the fact that they don't score on the road as they do at home. Has anybody ever looked at the defense to think about why the Cowboys don't score on the road like they do at home? Okay. It's easier to score plus 30 points against the Philadelphia Eagles when you create three turnovers okay. on forced fumbles. It's easier to score 30 points when Deron Bland is scoring touchdowns because he's picking right. off footballs and running him into the end zone. When this defense doesn't play in a way to create those turnovers, the Dallas Cowboys obviously don't get the short fields. They don't get the numbers of, uh, of possessions that they normally get. This defense is different on the road than it is at home. Mm. This defense has gotten bludgeoned on the road as opposed to what it's gotten at home. And it's like anything else, right? When I was young, right, I used to fight this kid on my street named Jericho every week. Jericho, right? Jericho wanted to, Jericho just wanted to fight, and he was one of those tough kids that didn't matter how many times you beat him up, he thought he was going to win the next fight. Okay. What I always wanted to do was fight Jericho in front of my house. Why? Because my mom would come outside. You ain't finna whip me in front of my mama. <laughs> now, you catch me on one of the back streets, and it ain't really my day, it might be a tie. But if we fought in front of the house, in front of my mom, Jericho, you got to catch these hands. That's what the Dallas Cowboys defense is. When they play at home, when they have that momentum, when they're excited, when you have the crowd noise, that's a team that creates turnovers. That's a team that gives the football back to their offense in positions to score. On the road, when they fight Jericho on the back street walking from Ellender, it's a crapshoot. Couple things. Uh, yeah, one, I don't want to unpack there. I don't want to fight you. Just to, I, I don't ever want to fight you. In front of anybody's house. Pat, did you ever lose to Jericho? Yeah, Jericho beat me he up got before you, too. He got you up a couple times. Time. Jericho was tough. Hey, where's the win-loss record? Love, love, love. You got, you got him. Yeah. Hey, here's my thing with this game. I think the NFC Championship and Super Bowl is on the line. I, I honestly do. The Cowboys are not going to go on the road for two or three games to get to the NFC title and/or the Super Bowl. And I want to see, can they win a game when it comes to physicality? This is the best offensive line that they have played this season. Detroit's offensive line. This game will be determined in the first quarter. 
If they don't control this game in the first quarter, Detroit will run the ball 50 times down also, their You throats. gotta remember, too, Philadelphia yeah. was moving the football early on the ground against the Dallas Cowboys oh, before were. the punch out. And so it's not about it's not about to me necessarily home and, and, and road in that sense, but it's about the way the teams approach them from a physicality standpoint in the run game.